Welcome to Beauty and the Biohacker where we explore the latest tools and trends in self-care, aesthetics, and peak performance to help you live your most beautiful life from the inside out. I'm your co-host, Rachel Varga, a board-certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 19,000 rejuvenation treatments performed on thousands of patients. And I'm Katie Moore, a self-proclaimed biohacker with three years of self-experimenting in the space of health and wellness technology. I'm on a mission to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness through my YouTube channel, Katie Type A. So join us as we sit down with some of the biggest innovators in the health space, the movers and shakers of the wellness world, and unpack some of the biggest secrets in the skincare and longevity space. We are Beauty and the Biohacker, and we're thrilled to have you along for the ride. Welcome friends. We are very excited today because we have a special guest all about focus, productivity, habit tracking, routine building. This is Alex Neckerton, and he is a serial entrepreneur who's built and sold multiple successful businesses. And ever since 2002, Alex has been passionate about improving himself, both mentally and physically. And now he's excited to combine his business skills with his passion and create Ulti Self, which is basically the ultimate biohacking and self-improvement app. So welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you for having me. I am so excited about this particular app because for me, I've been experimenting with it for a couple of weeks now. And I have to say, for someone who is type A and a biohacker, it kind of is a blend of the best of both worlds in terms of structure and the level of detail and habits that you've actually added to the tracker. So we're going to get into all of that today and what your particular app offers that is different from a lot of the other habit tracking apps um, you know, out there right now. So I first want to kind of begin with your own personal experience with habit tracking. What did that look like in the past, you know, up until creating this app? How did you actually stay on top of all of your routines? So when I was uh, probably like early teens, I had one of those allergy tests at a doctor and they said it's called a scratch test. And uh, it's not a scratch test. It was like completely miserable experience because I got about 40 shots in my back, you know, those little shots where they put the allergens and then you're itchy and like, you can't touch them. And you're like, I mean, it was torture. I thought about jumping out of a window at one point when they, when they did that test on me. And they told me after the allergy test, they're like, you got to get shots every day. I was so thrown off. I'm like, you know what? I'd rather have allergies. And about fast forward 10 years later, I go to a, um, a doctor and he suggests again, getting an allergy test. And I get all nervous. He goes, don't worry. They do it via blood test now called an RAST test. Uh, and they don't, you don't have to get shots anymore. You can get drops that just simply go under your tongue. And uh, that's, I, I went for this and I'm like, this is the best thing ever. I'm like, finally going to get rid of my allergies. And I got these drops. I got the blood test, which was easy. And I, I got the, the drops that go under your tongue. And all you had to do was put one drop of this stuff under your tongue every single day but you couldn't miss a day during the load phase and the load phase was like probably like 20 days or something like that it was long it was almost a month and you couldn't miss a day if you missed a day you had to start the load phase over again and it and it wouldn't and basically the whole thing stopped working and then the maintenance period was easier to handle oh and you had to do it on an empty stomach you had to do it first thing in the morning i thought it was so easy it took me like four and a half five months just to get to the i did not have it in me to put a drop under my tongue. Like this is how hard following habits is and building the whole 21 day thing. It's a big load of, you know what you just, I just end up missing days and I didn't have a reminder. I didn't have a system for it. And that was probably my first like understanding of how critical habits are, how important it is to make something a habit and make something actually, actually stick because something as simple as putting a drop under your tongue every morning, like, with travel, with work. I was working with a company in Europe at the time and, and I had calls in the morning and it would totally throw me off. You know what I mean? So like 
that's just an example that taught me. And I'm like, man, there needs to be a tool that gets people to stick. Like everybody knows what to do. The information is out there on, on YouTube, on all these channels. Everybody knows, you know, like there's blogs and everything. But actually doing it is like at least 50% of the challenge. So it's very important to, um, you know, to stick with the habits. So let me just uh, kind of backtrack in terms of like time frame. So this was before kind of like the cool productivity apps and habit trackers. Like was this way back when or was this very recent? No, this was before. I think this was like, I, I remember based on my old business, this was right around 2010. I don't think those apps were there at the time. So and out of necessity, you kind of were like, we, there needs to be something. Like there needs to be something. So this idea has been marinating in my head for a long time. It's just that I had my, my last business was very successful. I couldn't, I couldn't walk away from the money. You know what I mean? So I didn't really get into it. And then finally, when I turned close to turning 40, I'm like, it's time to follow my dreams. And it was more so than had than habits, you know, it was like, I, cause I feel like, well, I, I mean, my intention is ulti self is much more than just a habit app. It's a full blown wellness app because we have, you know, we have content on each of the apps. People can select the areas they want to improve and the app actually creates a whole entire customized routine for them. So just the habit tracking, that's just one little, you know, the accountability is huge, but it's also like, like there was a study done and I could send it later, the, the specific one, but you know, they tested students in terms of what percentage of their intentions they actually implemented. It's only like 50%. Like most people don't do what they set out to do. So doing it is like, and I don't know how it is with your guys' experience, doing it is like at least half the battle. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've, I've actually started integrating exercising in the morning. And this morning was my first time actually integrating cold plunge in the morning. Little did I know when I do my cold plunge, my hands are still frozen, can barely work. I'm still warming up for 15, 20 minutes. I have a hard time doing my hair and makeup to be totally honest with you. So it's when you start to integrate new routines and habits, there is a bit of an adjustment period. Uh, so give yourself a little bit of grace. Like if you just kind of mess up a little bit, it's like, okay, I'm going to do my cold therapy in the morning after exercise give myself maybe 20 minutes to have my breakfast smoothie, coffee, whatever, do my gratitude practices, do some reading, then let my body warm up before going, you know, straight into the high beta state. So with with so many habit tracking apps on the market, what drove you to create your own? Like what gap in the market did you see and that you set out to fill? The habit tracking, like I said, it's only one component. I wanted a complete wellness app because the habit trackers, I mean, it's basically like a spreadsheet, you know, all it is at the end of the day, this, we actually have content. So somebody could go, could go in, they could put in whatever they want to improve the different areas they want to improve. And the idea is kind of like what you mentioned, Rachel is like, it creates a, a customized optimal routine. There's AI in the back and there's some, some logic in the back of the app. It actually creates that customized routine because like you said, integrate a new habit, like with me, it's putting those drops in the morning, right? Well, there was an issue with that, right? Because I had those calls. So now how do I reposition everything? This is like that that control panel, like the way what I initially like kind of the way thinking about it, it's a control panel for your life. If you're trying to be your best self, if you're, if you're into biohacking, if you're into, you know, bringing your, and I, I think everybody should be getting the most out of each day, getting the most out of this life, you should have a, it can't be disorganized. If it's disorganized, if you're not tracking it, it's going to, if you're not controlling your habits, your habits are going to control you. One of the things that I always kind of gravitate towards in any sort of, you know, tracking app or even like, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I still use a like, like sticky notes and I write down like my to-do list in a notepad because there is definitely like just this sense of familiarity. I've been doing it forever. And there's something very gratifying about crossing things off a list, like physically crossing things off. So when I started using UltiSelf, I really liked the gamification aspect of it, where like, you know, if you complete a certain number of habits per week, you get like a star or you get extra points or you kind of get this like congratulations clip banner. And so it motivates you kind of in this subconscious way to keep doing it. How much of a factor do you think that plays into people actually sticking with their routines? 
Oh, a ton. I mean, if you look at all the science behind habits, right, it's a cue, which cue or trigger, then the action and then the reward. The, just the act of crossing it off, of checking it off, it actually scientifically proven, it gives you a little dopamine boost, right? So the way we, we designed the tracker and the app is we wanted to give a dopamine boost by, you know, the score goes up and the thing turns green once they have a weekly quota. It's everything, you know, it's one way we differentiate. It's a little nuanced the way the whole entire week shows up. And I don't, you see, the habit and, a, and, a, um, and an activity, they're kind of like intermingled. Certain things that are not habits are actually called habits by a lot of these other habit experts. But certain things you want to do, like you want to work out with weights like four times a week. You, if you're working out with weights every single day, that might be a little bit overkill. Right. That might be that might be a little too much. So that's an activity. So if I have that goal for myself to uh, work out with weights four times a week, I do my weight training. Boom. Congratulations. The little trophy thing goes up, turns green. Your score goes up. Yeah, that's going to get me over time motivated to work out with weights, to, to do that activity during that week. And we have a, we have an ebook that we um that we give out on our on our website called the habit building blueprint and one thing that i put in that ebook it's like if you actually don't worry so much about the individual habits because the habits are going to change the habits are your life is going to make you change your habits new discoveries new science comes out all the time the idea is you almost want to get hooked on using the app right you almost because that's going to keep you in control of your activities in control of your day in control of your time in control of your wellness and these little gamification features once you get into it like you know i'm as they say, getting high on my own supply. Like I use the app myself. Once I'm, once you get into it, I basically want to, you know, I want to hit my weekly quota now. It's like a drive for me. So I'm going to go and make sure that I, that I do that thing. But the habits themselves, like the, the, the science, ah, uh, here, I'll give you, I'll give you a recent example, like, um, like, or resveratrol, right? One day it's like the hottest thing. The next day, oh, not so sure, right? That was a thing called limo limosity. You guys probably remember that brain training, right? So all of a sudden, there's all these studies with Lumosity that it's so great for you. And then some Stanford thing comes out that it's not as great for you, as they said, right? Or power poses. That was a big controversy, too. So, so you know, the habits are going to change. But actually staying in control of your of your routine and staying on top of it, trying these new things and finding what truly works for you, that's the really key, key thing. One of the things I'd love to get into with you, uh, Alex, is the, like, the really like nitty gritty of what makes your app, the Ulti Self app, different from a lot of the other habit trackers. And specifically for me, you can, you know, definitely talk about like that calendar view. I know that was something that was a huge incentive for me to continue using it because I like seeing the week at a glance versus just the day by day. So I'd love for you to kind of get into some of the weeds on what, um, you know, different components are in this tracker versus other ones? First big thing is content. So let's say I'm struggling with my focus, right? And I want to improve my focus, right? Uh, I simply, I wish I could cast my app, um, but here, I'll see. I'll see if I can, if you guys, can you guys see that on, on there? Is it come, come through okay? So I just simply go, what do you want to improve? I put in focus. I go filter, boom. It it's going to come up with like a hundred different things I could do to improve focus. So, for example, listen to classical music, which is not being tracked right now, right? I'm like, okay, listening to classical music, what's that going to do? Simply open that up. There's a short video right here that I could watch about it, like a 40-second video. I mean, no other, no habit tracking app. Like, I don't even want to compare our ulti self with habit tracking apps because we're literally a full-blown wellness biohacking app, right? So we got the video, we got the description, we got the how to do it, the benefits, the amount of time it should take you, why it works, suggested frequency, how, how often you should do it. Remember, these things are called habits. You, a lot of them you don't need to do every day. I, metformin is one that I've been re, really following the studies on metformin. Some of them saying to not to do metformin, especially in the days you work out. You, you don't want to, you want to do it um, sporadically. So I mean, that's just, just one example of weight training is another one. You don't want to lift weights every day. It's, you're going to overtrain, right? And Alex, uh, where are you pulling like the information for these things for? Are these coming from studies? Are these coming from personal anecdotes? Yeah. yeah, I have a content team that's researching content. And, you know, we try to make it very brief because we don't want to overwhelm people with a lot of reading, but we try to make it very brief. And we are not pushing any one habit, right? 
we're neutral. So, you know, I'll talk about routines, but we have, we're going to have a routine from a guy that is super fit that, you know, built Jack works, doesn't eat meat at all. And then we have another guy that we're going to put on who does a carnivore diet. You know what I mean? So, so we're not like, we're totally unbiased, but, but in terms of habits, we have the content. We talk about the side effects as well. Uh, we talk about the categories that improves. So there's a tremendous amount of content. So if I, if I first thing is if I want to improve my focus, I got a whole stack of habits to choose from that I could do different supplements, different activities, we try to cover three areas. We try to cover nutrition and supplementation changes in your environment and specific actions. So for example, I'll give you some examples on focus. So nutrition and supplementation would be like, you know, extreme example, well, bullet coffee, right? You know, so, so, so that's nutrition changes in your environment to improve focus. Like we have another one habit here, declutter, right? Like that's one, like, that's a huge one for me. If my desk is messy, I can't focus, you know, then, then we got activities. So set daily intentions, kind of just did that before, before the podcast. So set daily intentions, be like, what's my, what's my MIT most important task for the day? You know, I, I want to know that every morning before I even start my day. Like people put way too much pressure on themselves. So what I do, for example, is I have one task for that day because things are going to come up and it's going to get in the likely to get in the way of my other tasks. But if I can get that one done, I can go to bed, not beating myself up. I'm actually going to move much more systematically without stressing myself out. So, so that's just the content piece, right? Once you get the content to go one, one step above and we're adding this component, these are basically routines and we added a new feature called social routines. So routines, basically we have routines as like a group of habits. It's basically your routine. Uh, some people focus on strictly morning routine, but they leave out the rest of the evening and afternoon and evening. Uh, and, uh, you know, and those are important, like having a wind down. You know, your next morning starts out with the previous evening because I like to plan my tasks the night before. What I don't do, I really need to get in the habit of doing this, is I don't wind down because I'm a total night owl, but really behooves to have a wind down routine. So, and then the social routines we're going to get, and I know, uh, you, you, Katie, you're going to put some up. We're going to have influencers. We're going to have experts. We're going to have biohackers like Katie and hopefully Rachel as well put their own routines onto the app, and then people are going to follow them. So you can make like a look like Dave Asprey routine, right? <laughs> they can do whatever it is that he did to look so young. Um, what I really like about this idea, Alex, is the concept of neuroplasticity. So we know Dr. Joe Dispenza, I've been able to do a whole day workshop with him. It was amazing. And he's a big proponent of neuroplasticity and like trying new things, making new neural connections. I think that this is a great way to encourage users to try things that are kind of out of their comfort level. And I do this all the time myself too. I'll do things to intentionally challenge myself to encourage that neuroplasticity, but also to build resilience. Like for example, starting my day off with exercise and cold plunging. The cold yeah. plunge is a new habit for me and I feel freaking amazing from it. Like I'm totally energized, super clear focused. So I love the idea of like pre-built morning and evening routines to get people to try new things yes. and see what, what feels good. And in the process, they're gonna be making new brain connections. I, I love this. It's very interesting you mentioned that, Rachel. Um, one of the guys that I'm trying to get to put a routine on our app um, is a guy named Andy Bustamante. So he's got a, he's a former intelligence officer. I was asking, you know, and, and we, we were talking about putting a routine up and he mentioned a mental sharpness routine, right? And I was like, you know, obviously to be in whatever agency he was, I imagine CIA, right? So they probably, you got to be operating at the top of your game. And I'm like, what's the number one thing? And he goes, they tell, they keep us on our toes. They tell us to alter our routines all the time, take a different walk, walk a different way, change. They That's go, called tradecraft. Actually, one of my favorite um, genres of books to read is actually espionage. And uh, Andrew, he's like the everyday spy guy. He's yes, just pretty yes, cool. Exactly. I exactly. love that. My husband does that too. It's like, we're going to go to the grocery store. Let's take a different route. Take a different so, route. Love that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, you know who it is, right? And Andrew. The, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, he was mentioning that. And that's like, that's so critical because there is, I probably won't say all the science right about this, but there is a concept of habituation. So for example, writing affirmations, like I'll just throw one, like doing that every day is good, but they're going to be way more effective for you on day maybe 20, then they are going to be on day 200. Because at some point, you're, it's, it's like, it's like when you're training a muscle, right? Like, like, 
you're going to work out. The, if you haven't worked out in a long time with weights, you're going to be really, really, really sore the first day, right? But then if you don't increase the weight, change the exercise, change the number of reps, change the rest time, day 40, that's going to do nothing. You're going to be already going to be stimulated. So you actually, again, you actually don't want to worry so much about getting hooked on one habit. You want to get hooked yeah. on using this app and continuously improving yourself. So, yeah. The, the whole phenomenon about like plateauing is a real thing. And I think that's something that happens to a lot of people who, you know, essentially do the same habit over and over and they feel like they're not making any progression or gains. And I personally would love to know from you, Alex, like what advice would you give someone who I, you know, would kind of consider like a perpetual, you know, yo-yo habit tracker. So somebody who's like gets super obsessed with tracking everything, but then they fall off for one reason or another. Yeah. And most people are in that, in that category. I'm actually looking for, it's a free ebook that we give them. We literally focus on that. We focus on habituation. We focus on the fact that you got to change things, but perpetual yo-yo habit tracking. Let me give a few uh, great tips of advice because I'm, I'm also one of those, like it's, it's super, super hard to build an actual habit. So first thing I would say is stop beating yourself up. Like it's not a terrible thing. If you're at least trying, you're already ahead of the game because most people are, they're not trying. Like if you're at least eating halfway healthy and thinking about it, like there's a whole ton of population out there who doesn't even give two craps about eating healthy, right? So, so, but same thing, the fact that you're, you're trying to build something is good. Second of all, and we get this with our users, they get the app, they get very excited about it and they start to build a ton of habits. They had 30, they had 30 habits to their tracker. Don't. Get like five or six. Get the core ones. The core ones are essential and then maybe five or six on top. But the core ones you should be doing anyway. So one thing that I'm going to do, you know, I, I don't compromise on these. I don't compromise on exercise. I don't compromise on socializing. I don't compromise on water, on, on hydration. Uh, when it comes to sleep, I don't go crazy with my sleep. As long as I get six hours, I'm happy. So I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's late, but that's a hell of a lot better than most people because most people can't sleep straight through the nights. They get three, four hours and they got sleeping problems. If I'm get six, seven hours, I'm good. Don't go too crazy. Get these basics. Like don't try to overhack yourself. There's a concept that we talk about in the, in this ebook as well called habit combos. So what is a habit combo? Um, you take two uncorrelated habits and you try to do them at the same time. Give you a simple example. My preferred method of exercise is playing sports. Why is that? Because in one fell swoop, I am getting the mindfulness meditation to, to play a sport. It's, it's a, it's a mindful activity. If I'm playing like, for example, pickleball, right? Following that ball, there's your meditation movement. I'm playing pickleball outside and I'm playing pickleball with a whole group of guys. You know, they have over by where I live, they have these round robins. So I go over there. I socialize, you know, we chat afterwards. So now in basically two hours, and it's a wind down. It, 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 it gets my mind off of the stress because I, I enjoy it. I'm very competitive. So now I basically knocked out five habits in, in a two-hour period just by playing a sport instead of wake, uh, meditating, walking outside, then exercising by myself in solitude, and then going to have a phone conversation with a friend just for the sake of having that phone conversation. Yeah, you're like habit stacking. <laughs> Stacking, yeah, like stacking is like one after another after another. This is combos. This is like like we talk about habit stacking, which is also great. Um, and habit stacking is when you use that reward of one habit as a trigger for another. At least that's that's the way I kind of uh, interpreted it. But this one is habit combos. We're literally we're literally doing four five habits at one. I mean, here's a simple example: go for a walk outside with your friends. Bring a bottle of water. Boom, four habits in 30 minutes. Uh, we have an AI uh, built in into the back of the app. So it actually correlates like a person at the end, we, we, we send them a push notification or a pop-up comes up where they can correlate, uh, where they can put in, how was your day? Here, I'll, I'll show you guys real quick. It's basically one, one through five. How was your day? We want to make it real easy. I mean, if people want to get real crazy, we got, not real crazy, but if we want to go in depth, we have productivity, mood, and health. And then we correlate each habit with that self-rating. On the how was your day, you know, I'll say I put four, right? And we pre each habit, the way that effectiveness rating is calculated, it's a combination of the pre-correlation for that habit. So if a habit has a lot of science behind it, we already automatically give it a pre-correlation ourselves. Like if it's overwhelming, 
and then we correlate the daily rating with the actual them doing the habit. And it's a combination of those two things. But those core ones, I mean, they have huge, they're all going to have really high effectiveness rating. I mean, I, I really encourage to do those. And then with the other ones, the pre-correlation is going to start out more at like neutral. So that way they can go and they can um, experiment. They could do those for a little bit, see how their body reacts because everybody's different. You know what I mean? So they could see how their body, I mean, like, like I'll give you an example. Like I love like bullet coffee. It makes me feel fantastic, uh, really focused. But I have a little bit of a sensitive stomach. So I can't do bullet coffee every single day. I got to do it. I got to pick my two days a week where I just want to knock a ton of workout. I'm going to do bullet coffee those two days a week. If I did bullet coffee five or six days a week, that's going to end really bad for me. That term yo-yo habit tracker, I'd almost correlate that to people that are into the bright, shiny object syndrome, which is you know pretty well most humans right now. Yep. And so I think that's great because you're kind of hitting that um, like addiction and need for the bright, shiny object syndrome with uh, new habits to try. And it's funny you mentioned stacking. Uh, you, you probably don't know this, but my hubby's a pro athlete. And when you were mentioning doing pickleball, you're getting your human engagement, you're exercising, you're hydrating, you're having fun, you're building your, your uh, clarity. And then for someone like my husband, it's like his form of spiritual practice is kickboxing and martial arts as well. And I notice when I uh, when he holds pads for me, you know, I'm, you can actually check out his YouTube channel, uh, Gabriel Varga, there's a couple of videos where he's running some drills with me. But getting that focus is great. And I love that I love that component of hitting the need of the bright shiny object syndrome people and giving them new things to try and building that neuroplasticity and stacking the habits. I think that's great. I love the idea of rating your day based on the habits that you performed. And then with your backend AI algorithm, it's going to give you more things that are similar to that or it's have those habits show up again. So Absolutely. I think that's a great way to be like, okay, that worked for me. That didn't work for me. And then the program will kind of lead you in the right direction. I think that was yeah. really cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, it's uh, yeah, we give habit suggestions and I mean, we have this, this is the optimal, this is the ultimate kind of end goal here is if you go under routines, I'm going to show this again, right at the top, we have your optimal routine. So this is going to be, and it's going to be their optimal routine. And you could actually activate that optimal routine and track it. And that's going to change based on the usage of the app. That's actually going to change. But just from like a data perspective, I'm just super curious. Like what would you say are like the top three habits that people are using or adding to their their routines? Just tell me. I need to know. I'm a data-driven like nerd. I need to I'm know. Put, well, first, I'm going to put together a report because that would be an amazing blog post to do for sure. But don't um, save it for the report. Give us the information I'm right I'm here. Trying to, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I mean, mindful, mindfulness was there. Uh, spend okay. time with family was there a lot. Interesting. Do you is, think that's uh, because of like everything going on in the world? Well, I mean, I figured almost like the, because they're, they're together with their families because of the COVID anyways. But I don't know. For me, I'm, I'm a very recent father. But that stuff like like spending like 10 minutes with my daughter is like – better than any kind of meditation or anything for the mood. Like, like today, my computer was acting out. I'm having one of those days today. And I went downstairs and my daughter, my five months old daughter was laughing, you know, and smiling at me and laughing. It was like an instant, like mood reset. When they add the habit to the tracker, this is really cool. They add it, set a reminder. So let's say I want to eat blueberries. Mm. That was the habit I pulled at two o'clock and one o'clock. And then you'll get like a notification a on your phone. notification or a text nice. message, whatever you prefer. Wow. So, so that's, and we purposely did text messages because everybody's checking their texts. But mm -hmm. that's, that's a super cool, cool way to go. That is really interesting because yeah. I, I personally have turned off all notifications for all apps on my phone because I just find it's like a distraction throughout the day. But if I right. got a text message reminder, I think that's really cool that you added that feature because yes, like yeah, if I see a text that. comes through, yeah, I'm probably more inclined to be like, oh yeah, I got to go eat those blueberries or something, well, you know? Everybody so that's, that's checks smart. their text. Mm -hmm. But even if like, I mean, again, this app is like, you really, you really want to get hooked on this app. Like, uh, because, <laughs> because, and I'm not saying that just from a marketing standpoint, but imagine <laughs> you, you turn off all your notifications for all the, 
you know, them trying to sell you stuff, but here you're actually setting your reminders to do good habits. It's like having a coach in your pocket. Like, hey, go do that. Don't forget, don't forget like vitamin D or you know, go take your vitamin D. You know, like like I forget half the days to do it. And it's a big immune system boost, booster. So so whatever it is that you're gonna do, it's good to have those those pushes or those texts or however way you do it, because that's going to keep you accountable to your routine. So we've had Naveen Jain on the show here. He's the founder of Viome and Moon Express. And uh, I recently interviewed him also on the Rachel Varga podcast. And he's talking about this concept of smart home. So when you go to the bathroom, it's measuring your stool, then you go to the fridge, and it's gonna poof, you know, it's like Star Trek, right? Here, right. here's your 3d printed food. I wonder if uh, kind of like a, a, a mixture of like your app and you know, smart homes, I, I don't love the idea of smart homes because of the EMFs and all of that stuff. I actually mm. snip all of those wires on my smart appliances. So it's not sending and receiving. I, I, returned, I returned the, the, the Bluetooth ones. I don't want to mess with it. Totally. <laughs> but I have a feeling that there will be, in the future be some type of integration with like the concept of like the habit app with the smart home. That's just my guess on like, I, I like to consider myself a bit of a health futurist. And I would love to see actually physicians in the future maybe potentially using apps like this to remind people to do their health motivating practices to improve their health. And medication compliance too. That's a big, that's a big kind of spinoff that we could do. Not saying that we're going to do it, but it's a spinoff. I think it has to be HIPAA compliant, obviously, but you know, when there's a lot of pills that somebody has to take every day, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to forget it. Going back to my initial story with those, um, allergy drops right so so absolutely like um that that's a big thing and they could actually check off the pills they took because remember like like have you seen like some older people have those little like trays with we the call Monday those uh blister packs so oh my gosh just- i totally use them all the time like i mean traveling but like yeah i love those things <laughs> Well, that, now you can have it right in your in your phone you won't even need it <laughs> they call them what rachel they're called blister packs. So based on someone's prescription, the pharmacist will put their, um, you know, what they need to take in these little, you know, put you push out and then you get your, your medications. Just FYI, this is a medical advice, educational information only. But if there could be some type of like integration with that, or say you had like a dispenser in your kitchen that was hooked up to some sort of app like you have, that would then dispense it. I mean, that could be a rabbit hole of like, all sorts of things. But I think that would be kind of kind of neat just to take the guesswork for people that maybe have like dementia that can't really remember to do things. And it could be kind of automated. It's sort of like those cat food dispensers. (laughs) Oh, I don't have those. I have just like the little like travel ones that I put like all my nootropics in because I like to, to, you know, change up my nootropics a couple of days a week. So like I'll have like my qualia mind on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll maybe have like my, you know, alpha GPC. So like I do it because it's just easy to organize for the whole week. And then I use the habit tracker and like the reminder be like, okay, you know, make sure you're taking this at like 7am or whatever I, I, you know, designate. Now, my last question for you, Alex, is what happens when you like, is there an accountability for like a two day rule? And by that, I mean, is like, if say I accidentally sleep in one day and then I don't do my morning habits and then the next day rolls around and I sleep in again and I didn't do my morning habits, like what, have you created a system or are you planning to create a system to like really get people back on the the saddle? Because I think that sometimes happens is like, you don't do your habits one day and you're like, well, nothing happened. (laughs) the, the The phone actually zaps them with electricity. Oh, okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. That, that sounds safe. Okay. Great. (laughs) Um, Again, it goes, it goes to the, to the gamification uh, factor. Like, I mean, the ultimate, the ultimate analogy that I, that I want to use is, um, you know, like the game blackjack, right? Like if I tell you guys, Hey, let's go sit in a room and, and count numbers. And we're going to be surrounded by a bunch of people smoking cigarettes and, uh, you know, when I sit there till 3 a.m., and if you're like in a Caribbean island, it's probably going to be musty as well a little bit. You're going to be like, ooh. But then you go to any, you know, every time you go on vacation, the casinos are packed. And I'm, I'm usually there. You know what I mean? So because of the gamification, because of the variable reward aspect of it. So 
and this is actually getting into specifics. I'll give you guys some of the kind of the insights of why we put we set up the design the way that we did. A lot of these activities, there, there's a weekly minimum that you're trying to hit. And that's what you should be aiming for. And the other ones have like these skips or or they have they have the didn't do like you mark if you didn't didn't do the habit, you actually go and manually mark it red, which I totally don't get. Like what does that reinforce the negative action? Like like and it's not really even punishment conditioning, it just kind of makes you feel bad about yourself. Here you have your weekly minimum and you're trying to hit it's it's either you did or you, or you didn't do it. Like I don't need a skip. That's the it's you you're trying to hit your weekly mark. And we have reminders for them to go back into the app during the week. And you almost want to take you want to take a a little bit like not a 30,000 view, but you want to go from the worrying about that daily view. You want to worry about that weekly view. And that's kind of goes into our correlation mechanism, because if you look at it from week, okay, you, I slept in like, I, I don't know, I'm having one of those days. I couldn't wake up this morning. So I, I, I slept in today pre ulti self. I probably would beat myself up over it. I absolutely love the app. I definitely recommend everyone listening to the podcast to go and check it out. And if you do go to ultiself.com backslash BB, there is a very special uh, offer for everyone listening and tuning into the podcast today, either on our podcast or YouTube page. And you should definitely watch our YouTube video because Alex did some great demos of the product. So make sure you head over to our YouTube channel and click subscribe. Alex, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure and a real like just kind of rabbit hole dive into the world of, you know, total optimization, performance and, you know, habit and routine building and what you guys are doing is incredible. And so I'm I'm so excited to continue using the app and I hope that our listeners uh, have some really good takeaways. I'm sure they do from this conversation today. So thank you so much for joining us, Alex. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Beauty and the Biohacker today. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a comment or share it on your social media account and we'll give you a shout out. And don't forget to head over to beautyandthebiohacker.com to check out all our episodes and our favorites page where we include our curated list of products with special discount codes just for you guys. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter because we're sharing some exclusive content and giveaways you won't want to miss.